Either? I've got the. Excellent. He's our enthusiast of the year. I've got the ah, list here. Ah, very good. He's bringing his Corvette. He's bringing black one. 14 cars. Oh, my gosh. Personal Out of his own collection wow. from GM, from, from the Heritage Center. Some surprises. Oh, okay. Okay. The serves. Oh, three wait. serves. Oh. One, two, and three. You know three. what you got to get from so them? One of his cars. There you go. Is they good? Of course, it's so these are all Mark's. Oh, no. You're kidding. kidding. Wow. wow. He's had a lot of damn cars. And a Bolt, 2018 Bolt. So he's oh. going, you know, he can talk about autonomy and talk about, you know, making it. That's great. Yeah. And in Kettering, in Kettering University, we'll be there as well. Sindri, yeah. um, if you pull the bonnet off the uh, GM Sunracer, GM Hughes Sunracer, got her name's on it. Is that right? We signed that in 1986. Wow. Yeah. You know, GM's got one of those ducks, those amphibious vehicles. The you one know, that which flipped is, over? The, yeah, the one that's... <laughs> the one at the bottom of that lake. And so GMC made them. I never knew that. And I was really? at the, the GM Heritage Center. This goes back two years ago or something like that. And they had a duck in the back, not on display. And really? I was like, what the hell is this doing back here? And they said, well, we're fixing it up. We, we do want to put it on display. Wow. I said, what yeah, do you guys have really this for? Cool. That's cool. And they said, GMC made it. And I was like, wow, I never knew that. Hmm. And I said, where'd you get this thing? And they said, it was out at the Milford Proving Grounds because there's a big lake there. Oh, and yeah. if there was stuff yeah, yeah. in the lake, like a dead bird or something like that, that they had to go, they'd drive out in the dock and retrieve whatever they had to get. Mm -hmm. And then it broke down and it was like just abandoned by the shore of the lake for like wow. a couple of decades. And then somebody hmm. said, wait a minute, that's, that's historic. Wow, that would be cool. Hmm. It's like the future liner. You, yeah. The, Love the future mm -hmm. line. Yeah. Have well, you, you ever know, been well, up in, in it? 40s, right? I've been inside it. Mm -hmm. Up in the top, in the well, driver's seat. You guys seat. had it at I, the concourse. Yeah. Did, oh, you had it at the concourse? Was you know the there? guys or, that restored the one on the yeah. west side yeah, of the yeah, state? Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. I saw it at the GM Tech Center. They had their own sort of GM Tech Center okay. car display thing. Somebody at SEMA has one, too. They, they bring but along each year. That's mm. the second generation. There are future liners from the 1930s, and I wonder if oh. any of them exist anymore. And they're like these Art Deco uh, 30s yeah, yeah. versions okay. of mm -hmm. streamlining. Looks like a locomotive. No, okay. it's, it, it looks old. Mm. I do. Oh. Yeah. So we go from three to four? Yes. Perfect. Good, good. Mm. You can do the boilerplate when you're ready. Okay, I want to thank everybody who's already tuned in live. Mm -hmm. We're going to be talking about the impact of autonomous cars and mobility on performance and the aftermarket. We're going to be talking about the St. John's Concours. We're going to be talking about a number, number of other things in the news. And if you would like to get in on the conversation, we'll take your questions. Shoot us an email. Send it mm -hmm. to viewer mail at autoline.tv and if you want to make a phone call for you brave souls out there there's the number 620-288-6546 and we'll get going in just a moment mm -hmm. watch autoline after hours live at autoline.tv every thursday at 3 p.m eastern time that's 12 p.m pacific you can subscribe to this podcast for free by searching for AutoLine in iTunes, Stitcher, or YouTube. AutoLine After Hours is brought to you by Bridgestone Tires, your journey, our passion. And by Lear, a global leader in automotive seating and electrical systems. All right. It's after hours time, Gary. It is. We get to do it again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I promised I wasn't going to do this last week, but... But you're going to do it this week? Do it what this week. Which is? So, so what happened today, 20 years ago, <gasps> and you may have been there, and maybe you have been there, and maybe you were there too. Today. Oh, it was okay. the 1998, the US 500 at MIS, and that was when Adrian Fernandez crashed going into turn four, and those three people were killed. Yeah, no, oh, I, wow. yeah. I was US there. US 500. And it was, wow. Yeah. Wow. And, uh, and that pretty much killed CART as an organizing series, and it killed that race. You're absolutely right. Yep. Yeah, so. I mean, that, that was, who wants to go to a sporting event where people get killed? Nobody wants to do that's that. That's right. I, I think that's what really hurt NASCAR when Dale Earnhardt got killed. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know, mm -hmm. you know, families don't want to bring their kids mm -hmm. to a sporting event right. where people get killed. Yeah, so. or large yeah. pieces of chassis come and fly in. Yeah, yeah. right. Well, so, yeah. anyway, it was popular. I mean, yeah. so next next week I won't have a on this day, maybe. <laughs> okay.
Nothing morbid, at least. Yeah, something happier. <clears throat> okay, people are hearing other voices on the show. We've got to explain who they are. We have Diane Phils Schneider. She is the executive director of the Concorde d'Elegance of America at St. John's, which is taking place this weekend. And it's great to have you back on the show, Diane. Thanks, John. Excited to be here. And, and I can't wait to talk about what you've got going there. But we've got to introduce our other guest here today. Back, John Warniak mm -hmm. from SEMA, mm -hmm. the Specialty Equipment Manufacturers Association. Did I get that? Specialty right? Market. Market. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. A long time ago, was it manufacturers? A long time ago, it was actually the speed equipment okay. manufacturers, but now it's a special equipment market, marketing association. Okay. So it's uh, not necessarily just the market, but the, the market segments, and we'll talk about that. Okay. Twelve different really cool segments and where the, where the industry is going. Yeah. Well, look, we got a lot to talk about, but I think we ought to kick off the show as sort of a memorial to Sergio Marchione. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. big loss for Solid. the industry. Absolutely. Yeah, it was uh, it was quite a surprise. I mean, it uh, shock. Just I mean, it ju it just came came so quickly, and um, yep. um, you know, so over the weekend when the news started coming out, and yeah. um, he you know being in a coma in a hospital in Switzerland after sh <laughs> shoulder surgery. I mean, you're wondering what what could possibly have happened, but um, yep. you know, here's a here's a man who who came to this town and, and basically. You know, not, not only did he save Fiat, which had been in trouble when he took over in 2004, but I mean, arguably, he saved Chrysler. Oh, he did. Yes. And when he mm -hmm. came here in 2009, mm -hmm. and uh, um, you know, the the if if you look at quarter after quarter, they just they did better and better and mm -hmm. better, and you know, and and you know, John, you you ran into him on more than one occasion, and and I mean, w what a character he was. I mean, in a good way, a character. Mm -hmm. No, I, I would. Totally agree with that. I mean, he was, unlike most corporate executives, you know, always with his rumpled sweaters mm -hmm. and, you know, sort of rumpled hair and everything like that. Whereas so many top execs are, you know, you know, perfectly coiffed, yep. perfectly mm -hmm. yeah. dressed, hard creases. On. Sergio was the opposite of that. And what was so interesting to me, too, is, I mean, here's a kid from Windsor, essentially, mm -hmm. right? An accountant. You know? Yes, we're uh, by trade, right? Well, an accountant, mm -hmm. but yeah. remember, he also studied philosophy and law. Right. And I mm -hmm. think it's those two things that really set him apart mm -hmm. as a thinker mm -hmm. in the industry, mm -hmm. especially mm -hmm. the philosophy part of it. Yeah. So, uh, so John Elkan, who's the chairman of FCA and Exor, who was mm -hmm. Sergio's big boss and who's the big boss of the organization, he, he wrote a little tribute, and I thought that this, the, these, these two lines are just summation perfectly. Um, this, he taught us to think differently and to have the courage to change, often in unconventional ways, always acting with a sense of responsibility for the companies and their people. He taught us that the only question that's worth asking oneself at the end of every day is whether we have been able to change something for the better, whether we have been able to make a difference. Mm -hmm. And I mean, just like, mm -hmm. what a tribute to, yeah. Yeah. to come out. And in. he wasn't afraid to take chances. I call it kind of the no fear attitude. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes you gotta jump off the cliff and build wings on the way down. He didn't necessarily have it all figured out. He had it pretty well in his right. mind, his vision. He articulated that very well. And uh, you know, leaders today like Sergio, they're comfortable with ambiguity. Uh, to a degree of ambiguity, but uh, you know maybe shareholders aren't, maybe Wall Street isn't, but you got to have a leader like that to take that chance. And, and I think he got that transformational culture mm -hmm. instilled at Chrysler with people like Ralph Jills and others. That uh, yeah. hey, we'll take that chance. Mm -hmm. we'll, we'll, you know, and if it doesn't work, we'll fail, fail fast, and get on to success. Right. I mean, and, and you know, John, we we've talked about like the Dart, which was a pretty good car, but as we also talked about at the time, it had a bad launch, right? Yeah. And so it never really never caught on. caught on, right? And Sergio killed it, right? And what executive at an auto company would say we're going to kill a vehicle versus they'd say, hmm, we spent a lot for that tooling, we've we've got to pay that off, <laughs> yeah. And, and, yeah. you know, so maybe we'll make a special edition and we'll put some stripes on it, or we're going <laughs> to, you know, I mean, it was that just, makes they, they would just yeah, they, they would just do <laughs> things like that. I mean, and, or you know, I mean, or the Chrysler 200 again. I mean, when yeah. it came out, it's second generation. I mean, it was a good car, mm -hmm. good looking you know, car, good looking yeah. car. You know, mm -hmm. interior design was was yep. really well done, and you know, and, and Sergio just saw, you know, we're, we're not we're not going to beat. Camry, we're not going to beat a cord, so let's just get rid of it. Get rid of it, right. And to your point, who would do that after you've paid all this money in the tooling? Yeah, no one. Yep. So, and, and you know, so now we've got Mike Manley, who uh, had been running Jeep for many years, mm -hmm. and then they gave him the job to run Ram, um, taking over for Sergio. And uh, 
So, so you got to wonder, I mean, is, is, this, is, is this going to be a situation, um, Mark Fields replacing Alan Mulally? I mean, is he going to be one of those scenarios where, mm. where Alan was such mm. a good executive and did such good things for that company that, you know, Mark could have, like, flown around, you know, without wings right. and uh, he still wouldn't have made it as, as good as Alan? It, it's a good question. And, you know, uh, we just got all the, the financial reports from the, the Detroit Three, uh, you know, GM, Ford, and FCA, and their numbers are all down. Right. You know, they're facing headwinds. Right. You know, steel prices, aluminum prices are oh, going yeah, up. There's this uh, question about mm -hmm. tariffs and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, uh, that could instantly make uh, Mike Manley not look as good as Sergio, even right. though Mike might not have anything to do with uh, yeah, the problem. Consequences, uh, right? What's happening? So outside outside. influence. But, uh, I like Mike a lot, and uh, mm -hmm. I've got a lot of confidence in him. I think he's going to do very well for the company. I think his real challenge is going to be on the Wall Street side, mm -hmm. you know. And as FCA looks to work with other partners, you know, more like Waymo and the like, or if someone shows up to buy the company, could he? Mike Manley negotiate as good of a deal as Sergio might have. Mm -hmm. Although, you know, one thing we learned about Sergio was was that basically he was he was a micromanager who who was involved in everything. And and I have a sense that Mike Manley is a guy who would delegate more. So when it would come to negotiations, it would probably he'd go to the extent that he knew what he was doing and then he'd call in the professionals, so uh, I, I wouldn't worry about it. Well, maybe the Good metric point. is how many cell phones does Mike have versus what yeah. Sergio had. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and who's at the opposite end of those yeah. real fast? Yeah. Okay. yeah. <laughs> for those who don't know, Sergio carried four phones on him, one for Europe, one for North America, one for South America, oh. one for Asia. <laughs> Just so we could keep those business <laughs> units kind of separate. But. I'd ring, I'd be looking all yeah. over. Who is it? You better have your own ringtone on that one. That, that's right. Well, this this is going to be the macabre show in some ways because I mean we, we got to give tribute to Chris Svensson, whom we had on the show, yeah. the guy who was responsible for the design of the GT40. His car will be at the Concours, oh, yeah. I see. It will be. His wife Sonia is bringing the car. His two daughters, oh, Anna and Ella, are coming as a tribute mm -hmm. to him. So. Mm -hmm. That was one of his requests. Yeah, and, uh, and we will do something at Cars and Coffee as well on Saturday morning. That's great. Um, we have a lot of guys coming and gals with GTs, so I think mm. we're going to have an engine rev or something to salute him. Oh, yeah, yeah you, you were saying before the show, not a moment of silence. Oh, no. Yeah. I don't moment think he'd want to notice. More, Why would he want, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Why would he want a moment of silence, you yeah. know? He, yeah. He was, Here we got a picture yeah. of him up. Yeah, yeah. So, so, what a great guy. 58 years old, right? I mean, so I think he was even young. younger than that, maybe 53. 53. Yeah. So, so we had him on the show just before he was leaving the following day to drive his, his restored Mustang Dang. to the New York Auto Show yeah. because it was the 50th anniversary of uh, Mustang. Right. And, uh, and, and the funny thing was, was that, you know, it was he and, he and uh, um, Farley, Maury Callum. Oh, oh, right. oh yeah. And, and you know, who, who is uh, the head of, of Ford Design. And the, and the funniest thing was, uh, in New York, I had the opportunity to talk to those guys, and they were just like all, oh, you know, because they, they went through Canada and got into a snowstorm, oh. and they had oh, to keep yeah. stopping because the windshield wipers weren't keeping up yeah. with the snow, and they didn't realize how bad the <laughs> suspension was and how their backs were aching. And, it was and a it was, freshly restored car that they right. drove, you know. Most oh. people would trailer it, but nope, they took yeah, a road they had trip. To drive it, but so what he, a great story. He, he was a great guy, and, and yeah. uh, we're going to miss him. And then last but not least, uh, we lost a journalistic colleague today, Warren Brown. I just saw that online. Oh, yeah. yeah, and uh, so he was the... Uh, um, Washington Post. Washington Post car reviewer yeah. in uh, mm. 70. But... Uh, so, okay. tell us about the concourse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, so, we, we don't have anything Gary morbid this year. <laughs> Thanks for that segue there, yeah. Gary. Um, Although, uh, a few years ago, you had the history of hearses. Hearses, we did. Right. That was. Yeah. Yes. Fascinating. And oh, people, people still talk about it. We, they loved it. We had Joe Prey from um, Charlotte, who owns a funeral home, took his on the motoring tour, which was cool. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So the Ford test like track. 18th century horse drawn yes, horses. Yeah, early horses. So not yeah. your first time by, your last yeah. time ride. Yeah. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Which you may not be aware of what you are in. So. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh. No, but we do have um, 28 other cars of classes this year. We don't have hearses, but. Um, okay, so, so, what's so where, and, yeah. where, and, where and when, first of all? Let's establish place because we have people all over the world watching this show. and uh, um, It <clears throat> starts on Friday. We have 15 events in three days at the Inn at St. John's in Plymouth, Michigan. 
So this weekend. This weekend coming mm -hmm. up, exactly. That's why I'm here, but my team's over there working on this. So, so how big is this thing? It's big. We, um, on Sunday is the actual Concord. And last year, it's our 40th year this year. Last year, we mm -hmm. set a record for the um, largest attendance in our history with over 15,000 people. Excellent. So in our ancillary events have grown tremendously. We had 1,200 cars at our Cars and Coffee last year. Wow. And this year on Facebook, it's frightening because there's 2,900 people that said they're interested or they're oh. going. Mm -hmm. So um, that's kind of good and bad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Where are we going to park them? But yeah. um, we just we have a lot of events. We have Battle of the Brands Friday night where Excellent. enthusiasts bring their cars and park by car um, mm -hmm. mark. And usually Porsche wins with the most. We have a band and lots of fun out in the parking lot. Um, in the morning, Cars and Coffee on Saturday. We have a seminar with the legends of Porsche racing, Hurley Haywood, Vic Alfred, yep. and mm -hmm. Brian Redman. Wow, that is uh, the triple uh, header. Yeah, you got the icon. Porsche. So, mm -hmm. yeah, and that's, that's going to be phenomenal. Um, Haggerty has a seminar with Wayne Carini, who is still beloved by the enthusiast community. Mm -hmm. You know, we get calls every week, is Wayne Carini coming? So <laughs> that's fun. Um, in the afternoon, GM at 1.30 has a seminar. Michael Simcoe will lead yeah, a seminar. Head of design yeah. at GM. Yeah. yeah, head of design at GM. He has a seminar on the Firebirds, the three Firebirds, the turbine fire oh. cars. So we'll actually the, the the concept cars from the 1950s. We're exactly. not talking about 1958. No, not, not the ones the with the chicken. not the yeah, not the uh, Trans Am uh, with uh, the Jim T tops. No, yeah. yeah, these are not the <laughs> T top <laughs> Firebirds. No, these are the 1958. The and yeah. later the jet, um, age, the jet age and we will roll one out of the grand ballroom and they will fire it afterward with its gas so with, turbine a, engine. with a, a gas turbine engine yeah yep. so that whistle is so distinct you know yeah. sounds like a jet fact, wasn't one of them conceived as an autonomous car yes yes it was, it was yeah no drive yeah. And, uh, and they uh, actually there was a catchy song that they sang in it and it, that caught on for that era of uh, they actually call into a tower to say ask like what restaurant was open what hotels are available while they're driving on the road in 1958 yeah so, because the, the, the concept of autonomy then was you still would need a control tower to control yeah, all the yeah, traffic. Yeah, yeah. They didn't call it OnStar or anything back then. Yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> whatever it would have been, but uh, control the tower, tower to Firebird 3, whatever it was. And, uh, uh. No, we, have a, we have a charitable side, too, because we're a 501c3. On um, Friday night, we have our Motor City Mingle, which is our kickoff mm -hmm. dinner. It's to benefit JDRF. Mm -hmm. um, our beloved Gene Jennings will be one of the um, master of ceremonies, along with myself, and we'll raise some money for, for juvenile diabetes, so that's fun. That's um, mm -hmm. We'll be honoring our founding fathers, mm -hmm. you know, 40 years ago. Some guys sat around like this and said, we ought to have a car show over at Meadowbrook Hall. Mm -hmm. So um, we're going to honor Don Summer, who was kind of the spearhead of that. Del DeReese, who worked for AMC at the time. Mm. Um, Dave Holes, you all remember yeah. Dave Holes, GM Design, Design, right, who did some great work. Um, Jim Quinlan was one of those guys. Otto Rosenbush, who worked for FCA, and now you know mm. his son Brant, who was leading the charge over at the, you know, their new vault they're doing at Jefferson and Connor. So, um, you know, most of those guys aren't with us anymore, so it's... It's great yeah. to pay tribute to the guys who are. And it continues on because of the, the life and that legacy being recreated each yeah. year like that. And then Doris Jills, her project, Beautiful Inside and Out um, Charity, we'll have a lunch for them on Saturday, and that's open to the public. Most of these events are open to the public to attend. You can purchase tickets. So we um, raised quite a bit of money last year for Doris's charity. Um, Saturday night we have a chairman's dinner that um, about 100 people attend. That's a nice dinner. But the, the, big, the big event is on Sunday where we'll have 300 cars on the show field that are invited from around the world. Now, what sort of special things do you have? You know, we mentioned the hearses before <clears throat> in the past. One of my all-time favorites <clears throat> of any concours I've ever been to in my life was uh, Indy Racers. And you had them lined up as if it was a qualifying grid. And it started <clears throat> out from like 1911 on the front row. And it, as you move back <clears throat> in the field, the cars got more and more modern yep. all the way to the, the present day. That was mine as well, because I'm a big Miller fan. If I could ah, have a two-man well, Miller car, would be my car. Yeah, yeah. Right. that's oh, yeah. my dream car. So this year, do you have um, any sort of special thing? Along we do. With? We're honoring Sam and Emily Mann as our collectors of the year. And they hail from New Jersey. So they'll bring five cars that have been Pebble Beach winners. They've won around the world with these cars. One of them is Walter P. Chrysler's car, um, 1931, I believe. Um, that's a historic car, so they've, for, especially for this area, but their cars are all beautiful. Um, Mark Royce, our enthusiast of the year. How many cars is he bringing, Gary? Well, this 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 list. <laughs> Dr. Data has it. This, 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 this list is. I, I got to read this list. He's going to bring a 59 Corvette, a 68 Corvette, a, a 87 Buick GNX. 
Oh, that, that, yeah. That's, yeah. yeah. So it's like a SEMA that's car. That's SEMA-esque, yeah. That's very yeah. SEMA. Um, he's going to have a park. 62 oh, Corvette, a 63 Corvette, uh, another 63 Corvette, a 59. And these are concept cars, the CERV, C-E-R-V. The research vehicle. So he's going to have the CER-1, the CER-2, and the CER-3. Well, these are the cars that Diane was talking about, right? Right. The CERVs are the jet age cars. No, those are the Firebirds. These are totally different. So this is Firebirds. So the one of the serves were basically safety oh. research. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And they're from 1959, um, 64, and 90. Oh, right. God, got a good oh, memory. Yeah. Two and three. He's oh, going yeah. to have an 18 bolt. Well, because part of it is is taking that electric vehicle and turning it into an autonomous car, that charge that they gave the universities mm -hmm. to do that. Yep. Okay. And then Kettering University is partnering as well with our Concord, and we'll have their bolt that they're one of those those universities that are doing that. And and this maybe maybe we're maybe I'm making news here by reading this. He's going to have a 29. No, he's going to have a 2019 hmm. cruise AV. Hmm. Ah, uh -huh. that's. A... Got to come to the Concord to see yeah. that. Yeah, absolutely. He's also going to have a 19, 19 Camaro Corvette and a 18 Camaro. So, Mark's got a lot of cars. Okay. You guys have, you're going have, you're gonna have steam cars there. 14. We do have steam cars. Mm -hmm. I mean, have steam how cars. cool is that? Well, and, and that shows you the progression of the technology. What a better place to showcase it than the whole lineage yeah. of what makes cars cool. From and steam to year. autonomy. Yeah, absolutely. And we're That's Detroit, so, cool. so we love we love hot rods, we love drag racing, we love Woodward. So yep. we have a salute to the Logie chassis cars in our drag racing class. So um, that'll be a lot of fun. We're going to do a cackle fest with some of those cars. So explain mm -hmm. a cackle fest for those who don't know what that Dance. is. We cackle fire them up. We fire them up and, and listen we, to those those. Drag motors cackle. We yeah. let those engines and go. It, it's a tribute. It's, it's a yeah. music to ears. It's it is. <laughs> For those of us that love that kind of sound, it's mm -hmm. great. So we'll do one Ford, one GM, and one Chrysler car or Dodge. But um, we have a unique car. We have a Buick on the field as well. And that's the only Logie chassis Buick there was. So wow. that's cool. Yeah. Um, I mean, we have something for every automotive enthusiast, 28 classes of cars. Um, Bugatti is one of our featured marks. Um, Keith Crane will have his 39 Bugatti there. He's being honored as our um, distinguished judge. He has judged every Concours in our 39 years of existence. So, um, Is this his Bugatti? It is. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, look that at that. That's a, yeah. that's a beauty shot there. No hmm. kidding. Wow. And as you probably know, Keith is the chairman of the board of trustees at, at College for Creative Studies. Mm -hmm. So that photograph was taken at College for Creative mm -hmm. Studies on our media preview day on July 11th. Mm -hmm. And one of the reasons we had our preview there is we held a contest for the students at CCS to come up with a piece of poster mm -hmm. art. And we said, we are featuring, or we're celebrating the 70th anniversary of Porsche. So use your imagination, use your creativity, mm -hmm. and give us a piece of, of art. And we, it was difficult to choose. We whittled it down to 12, then we whittled it down to three. And the winner was David Pickla from Rochester Hills, mm -hmm. and nice young man who just graduated. Um, he's got an awesome Ford Raptor truck, but he started his career a week ago at GM Design and uh -huh. in Interior Design. So, mm -hmm. and um, John has that poster here today. Oh, but let's really? see. Um, yeah, let, let's show that. So, in this addition, the, uh... in addition to the, um, that's that's oh, not no, the no, one. That's the, wrong the, poster. that's the other two guy. Posters. That's the other guy which we'll talk about, but in addition to this poster. Oh, yeah. Well, that's got the Martino so these, dollars. Yeah. Yeah. So this car, unbeknownst to David, who did the mm -hmm. art, this mm -hmm. um, 917, number 22, will be on our show mm -hmm. field, and that's a, a car that belongs to the um, Porsche Museum. Yeah. So PCNA brought it over. Well, the 917 so, is that's your one favorite? of the absolute <laughs> iconic Porsche race car. Absolutely. Maybe yeah. the most iconic, oh, yeah. at least for it people is. our age. <laughs> Yeah. And that livery, that color scheme goes back. Oh, way back. Yeah, 60s. That's the very famous. Late 50s. Yeah. Yeah, so that, that was, that was he, he was thrilled when he found out that car would actually be at the Concours. So in addition to winning a cash prize for this and having their art featured, these three young artists have been invited to be judges on our Concours field on Sunday. Yeah, and I mentioned there's two, po oh, look, there's a picture of the 917. Oh, yeah, there you go. So yeah. just absolute classic. Yep. Gorgeous. John mentioned that I just had my dress like that today. Not only that, <laughs> yeah. uh, remember it was Ferdinand Pieck, I believe that was really? the guy who was the, the engineer of that car. And so who later went on to, to run the whole shebang at Volkswagen. I didn't realize that. Well, let's show, uh, to explain this other poster. What, so what do I have here that I'm holding up. This is celebrating our 40th um, Concours and this art was done by Steve Pasteiner. 
Ah. Now, I know who Steve is, yeah. but for the audience, again. You explain like, who Steve is. Well, Steve is one of the all-time car, cl classic car experts in this area. Exactly. And, and it goes beyond this area, but he lives here. And uh, former designer himself. Well, I shouldn't right. say former. The guy still, still designs. designing. <laughs> he is. Yeah. And he, he said, Diane, I am not an artist. He said, but I, I will do this, and I'm excited to do it. So he did a awesome. tremendous job. And this is Sam and Emily Mann's um, car that they're bringing to the Concord. So they're this really car, yeah, will be the there. Delahaye, yeah. yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, so you have to come and see the Delahaye on the field. In fact, I think we've got some more pictures of cars. Carmen, why don't you just start bringing up some pictures? I, mm. I, I hope I haven't put them on the spot. It's a real wide variety of, of classes. Um, you know, we have to have something that appeals to the, to the youth. Oh, and, and yeah. so this is the that's picture. That's the car. Oh, yeah. That's I the remember. car, the yeah. Delahaye. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's Delage and Delahaye, so they have a couple of each. The swoopy French cars that I just yeah. love from the 30s. Right. And their cars are stunning. There's not a bad one in the in the. So bunch. how does how does someone get their car to be considered to be able to participate in this? Some cars are invited based on our car selection committee going to other shows and seeing them or knowing what restores are working on. Mm -hmm. But most people nominate their car to be invited, mm -hmm. and that nomination process starts okay. in November for next year. Let's, let's bring that red one back up. What is that? That is a Bosley. It's an Italian car. Um, that's a 1966. Great shape and form Look at the, look in the at design. The, Look at the front of it. It looks. Is that like a swan or something? It's in a, the pelican. Pelican. a pelican. It's a pelican, right? Wow. <laughs> right. So you have to come out and read the story of the Bosley. I'm going to have to because unique. I've never seen Bosley. that car, no. not even in pictures that it's I. It's a remember. neat story. Hmm. I won't go through the whole thing, but that's one of the the catchiest, most unusual cars on our field, I think. Mm -hmm. Like we have the top ten cars you should see, and that's one of them. Um, we're featuring Rolston body cars this year, so we have you know Duesenbergs and you know their their coach work was amazing. Okay, here's something a little bit more yeah. contemporary. And, and you know we have to have cars that appeal to to younger enthusiasts, so they'll come to events like this and they'll get to love this car hobby and carry it on. So this is Lauren Mendelssohn's um, oh, 2018 Ferrari Lusso. Mm -hmm. So that's it's a beautiful car. Yeah, they're hardcore. You know, for Tifosi. Yeah, and Lauren is, you know, a huge enthusiast, so she always has something great to bring. Yeah, and you're right, a celebration of the car for all ages. Exactly. Together. That's, that's what makes it so it's cool. Like the, from the steam cars to that kind of car. And you're have motorcycles. Um, we do have oh, motorcycles. Oh, yeah, you do have that section in there, yeah. Um, yeah. And we started out with, like, American Fours, but now Randy Hayward, I don't know if you've ever met him, but he's he's a local guy that brings his bikes to autorama he he just went out and did race of the gentleman out in new jersey with his mm. bikes um he's put a phenomenal group of motorcycles together from all over the country mm. so we do have motorcycles yeah, they go hand in hand two or four wheel i mean that same that that enthusiast enthusiast culture is so cool and, and all the iconic people that are surround that the, the heroes and the celebrities yeah a lot of people have both they have cars they have bikes they have trucks they have yeah. all kinds of things so um, you know, we have a, um, a group of cars called Modern Collectibles, and those are like the Nissan Skyline GTR. Ah. You know, things that yeah. kids had, on, you know, a poster of that in their bedroom in the 70s. You know, they said, wow, that's a cool car. I want that car. Mm -hmm. But who would ever think that would be at a Concours? Yeah. You know, and we... Just give it time. Yeah, we, we, have, to, and we, have, to, we have to think about that. Every decade, you have to look mm -hmm. back another decade yep. and, and, and invite that decade in. And that's, that's kind of a hard pill yeah. for some of these guys to Back swallow. Here we got one. Oh, yeah. 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 See? And right hand steer. So this is yeah. authentic. That's that's really rare for you know to have in this area. So but for some of the mm -hmm. you know, the die hard, you know, Concord enthusiasts, they go, Wow, why is that car even it's here? Too new. Yeah, or yeah. too yeah. Too contemporary. <laughs> right. They remember seeing him on the road. And too not American or too but I said you have French yeah. cars, you have cars from all countries. Yeah, so it's cool. yeah, so yeah. It's, it's pretty interesting. Well, credit to Nissan. They've actually got two in that category, and they're the only company that does. See? The other one is the 300ZX. See? Was that Skyline actually a Nissan or a Datsun? Uh, That's a Nissan. Uh, Nissan. Mm -hmm. In Japan, it was Nissan, I think, at mm -hmm. the time. And here it came over and was okay. Datsun, I think. Datsun, yeah. right. Mm -hmm. Was it that true, Gary? 1970 would have been a Datsun, yeah. Oh, that was, that was the Datsun Saves era? Yeah. 
show the quart of gasoline. You got a good memory. Yeah, I remember the commercial. That's a building off of Jesus Saves, they said. Yeah, Dobson yeah. Saves. <laughs> they had the quart of gasoline and a wine decanter there. <laughs> it saves. There's some guys that are driving some Faso Vegas from Indiana, which is a pretty cool story. You know, they're not, tra mm. most people trailer their car to a Concord unless they're real close by. But these guys are driving these cars from Indiana. So that's yeah, I like a neat that. story. So do I. I love it. I like it. that a lot. Sure. Why not? Cars are meant to be driven. Right. So, I mean, you know, like Ford's cool when they won the uh, Baja 1000 with uh, the new Raptor, mm -hmm. original Raptor that came out, and then they drove it home back mm -hmm. to Dearborn. No kidding. That's pretty cool. That's a statement that a lot of people remember. So how do you find the cars in the gaslight category? There's a whole, we have car selection committee members that each have a certain class of cars, so they're familiar with that class, and they, they seek out the best examples of those cars in those classes. So they're going to have a 1909 Sears motor buggy. Whoa. From Sears. Yeah, you could order it through the Sears catalog. Book. You actually ordered it. Can you imagine Out of the that? catalog. The yeah. Sears? Yeah. Yeah. A 1912 Havers? And I don't, hmm. I've never seen a Havers. I don't, I've never heard, I've never heard of a Havers. That sounds like agricultural. A yeah. Pope Hartford? Those are, oh, those yeah. are high horsepower cars. Well, those Pope's, are great. No, but Pope, Pope, Pope Hartford. Hartford. I can't yeah. say that I've they're, that. they're high power horsepower high horsepower cars. They're great touring cars, even in today's age. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 1911 Thomas Flyer. Wow. Very nice car. Yeah. Yeah. You should see that car. I it's, think of it's it really Thomas beautiful. being buses. Bus. But no, it's, <laughs> it's beautiful. It's a real tall car. It's, yeah. it's really beautiful. A lot of brass in that group. A lot mm -hmm. of shining, a lot of mm -hmm. polishing. Mm -hmm. Hey, look, we uh, got to take a quick commercial break. Why don't we do that? We got a lot more to talk about, especially got to get into the stuff that you're working on, John. I'd love to. But uh, mm. let's take a quick break. We'll be right back. Lear Connexus offers a parental controls application with geofencing that sends notifications regarding driving behavior and location, including curfew alerts, acceleration alerts, and speed alerts. All delivered to a smartphone application that includes vehicle location, driver notifications, and a report card of driving history, including notifications when predefined geographic boundaries are crossed. For more information, visit Lear.com. And we are back. And of course, everybody who watches the show knows that after we take our quick commercial break, it's time for Dr. Data. Okay, so this, this is, there's, there's actually a coincidental milestone associated with this this number so Carmen or Katie please bring up the clues so phone wallet keys clothing glasses bag backpack vape e-cigarette headphones driver's license here are 10 items they're related in some way to the auto industry collectively I mean driver's license obviously so what might these 10 objects represent no, John, you can't tell what's back. No, no, there, I can't there, tell. There's, there's <laughs> absolutely nothing that is yeah, visible. Yeah, back. Yeah. Background is You're not a clue. You're squinting until you yeah. figure it out. Figure, sometimes yeah. you can see if it's a road or a car or That's something cheating. like that. I would say that those are the top ten things that you can find in every car or on every driver in a car. It's probably true, but wrong. Yeah, not the vape. <laughs> that, uh, oh. hmm. Diane, any idea what that might be? They're all designed... No. You're thinking, Something to do with you're, thinking, you're thinking too hard. Yeah, okay. John? Yeah, not, no clue. The vape is throwing me. I'm thinking of connecting the dots between the All right. Wait, see, nine. Okay, yeah. so, so you're, you're, you're focusing on the vape thing. When you <laughs> see the answer to this, you'll, you'll immediately say, that's why the vape is on the list. So bring up the answer. The 10 oh, most frequently forgotten God. items oh. in an Uber. Oh. <laughs> Wow. Oh. So Uber just, they just uh, celebrated 10 That's billion what? trips. Wow. 10 billion. 10 billion, billion trips. trips. But, uh, so most Uber driver's customers are vaping. Well, they, or, or they're, they're losing their vaping oh. devices. Yeah. And they're along recording. With, along, yeah. with their, along with their wallet and their yeah. phone. And I, I think it's a driver's license. Yeah. How, yeah. how funny is that? Why would, why would you have your driver's license out? So all the Uber lost there. a pound. Yeah, but when, look at that. I mean, when you're in an Uber, I mean. It yeah. seemed crazy to me. It is. But, uh, hey, and that's a good segue to talk uh, with John Morniak here. I mean, you, you represent the performance aftermarket business here. 
What the heck is all this ride sharing going to do to that segment, and, and especially with autonomous cars? It's, it's going to add to it. Uh, it's going to coexist. Uh, Alex Roy, a good friend of mine, he says, you know, zero day is the last day that someone gets in their personal car and drives on a public road. We're 100 years from that. So the cool thing is we're going to coexist. You're still going to have hobbyists, certainly all the stuff going on in the concours and all the hobbyists that have vehicles out there. The ride sharing and I think all the other uh, mobility services popping up, that just adds to it. That's, you know, that's like utility. Okay, Jen, let's, nothing to do with your hobby. Let's, let's yeah. step back here a minute. So, so you're with SEMA, and if somebody goes to the SEMA show, they're going to say to themselves, I'm at a place where there are people who are truly focused on hot rods and muscle cars and tuning yeah. and things like that. Performance. And, and they're going to see tires, and they're going to see wheels, and they're going to see things that will cause your car to go faster Absolutely. And yet you guys, and yet you guys are now talking about autonomous technology. Now, it, it, to my mind, the, these things are are poles apart. It's because different generations. Each generation, each uh, generation comes up with what their definition of cool is. So you're seeing that, and they coexist because you got multiple generations there. Uh, the best way to summarize SEMA is uh, SEMA makes you smile. Someone's interpretation of what's cool. There are literally, uh, of the 160,000 or so people that come to SEMA and the exhibitors and the 2 million square feet of all the coolest cars you've ever seen on the planet, they, the show is not for people that like cars. It's for people that love cars. And more importantly, I like to use this almost as a priest, if you will, SEMA is the intersection of cars and car culture. And that's what it is. It's a celebration of the car, particularly the automotive lifestyle. So yes, the lifestyle will change, but you will still have people that either miss the muscle car era, performance car era, that will definitely want to be part of that and relive it and making their definition of what's cool. Uh, you know, this is the 50th anniversary of Mattel Hot Wheels. How many of us had Hot Wheels cars if that was the first car you had? Pretty darn cool, huh? Yeah. They will find a way. There's, there is an entrepreneur, there is some innovator out there like Kyle Vogt or George Holtz that is going to make autonomy cool, and it will be at the SEMA show. Okay, so, so you guys did a, a, a deep dive study with Ducker Research, and you, you looked Ducker in... Ducker and Carr, Center for Automotive okay. Research. Yeah. And so, so you basically looked into how autonomous technology would, would have an effect on, on your segment of the market. Mm -hmm. And so you guys came up with this number that you think that the, the um, automated driving and assistance systems aftermarket is going from 977 million in 2016 to 1.5 billion that's right, by Dr. 21. Data. Yeah. <laughs> okay, now, okay. And that's just <laughs> passive ADAS systems. Okay, so, okay so, so explain to me what is aftermarket about that? Well, I think there's 260 some million cars in the U.S. car park alone, just the U.S. car park. 60 million of those vehicles are basically candidates to be updated, retrofitted with advanced driver assist systems. Basically the passive stuff, lane departure warning, forward collision warning, backup cameras, rear cross traffic alert. Uh, where SEMA really comes in is, uh, let's say you're an off-road enthusiast and you want to uh, you do some rock crawling with your Jeep or whatever the vehicle may be. You can put cameras now under each wheel and watch how you're climbing up where that tire is being planted. So maybe you don't need a spotter? Absolutely. And you got that right on your displays, all four wheels. So you're going up and over. Uh, think of uh, towing vehicles, big part of the SEMA industry. You're either taking your car, your bike, your recreation stuff. Going to the concourse. Desert, going right. to the concourse. Uh, backup camera. Uh, literally, there are companies aftermarket coming in. So you, let's say you have a factory installed camera, but you put the trailer hitch in, and you got your vehicle behind you. Well, the aftermarket camera goes on the back of that vehicle. Right. So it switches right over from the factory installed ADAS to the aftermarket ADAS, and you got the system working and functioning the way you want it to. All sorts of opportunities like that. And I think, uh, as I mentioned, the 60 million vehicles, let's say you, you've got a vehicle 2015-16 coming off lease. Your new one has a lane departure warning, collision warning, whatever. The one coming off lease doesn't. You want to hand it down to someone in your family. The aftermarket's a great way to actually update that vehicle at a, almost a quarter of the price of the factory systems, mm -hmm. but nonetheless very functional. And again, these are warnings. These are passive. They don't control, take over control of the vehicle, but they add to the safety performance. And the biggest number you're seeing there, Gary, are basically that's an emerging market segment within SEMA, the aftermarket community, that I'm calling safety performance, mm -hmm. making safety cool. And people like the Troy Lee Designs and companies like Brand Motion, Auto Motion Alert, which is the first 
forward aftermarket device. Think of, you know, the chimsel. Mm -hmm. Think of a front chimsel that tells you if it's, uh, let's say it's cyan color is what SAE is looking at. If it's got a cyan colored light on the front, it means it's in autonomous mode. Oh, wow. Telling pedestrians to look out. Yeah. Mm. No, that's oh. fantastic, and I think that's going to become an industry standard. Absolutely, and, and you got great comp aftermarket companies like uh, R Plate, the first digital license plate. Right. Think of what it took to do that, and think—I yeah. mean—and it looks darn cool. I saw one yeah. in uh, Bo Bach cool. in the shop last week out in. Uh, I saw it in Really, yeah. 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 really yeah. cool. Yeah. And think you can put all that stuff in there. So things like automotion alert, uh, amber alerts, you can put right over that digital license plate. That's where the aftermarket comes in because you don't have to wait 24, 36 months to get it onto a production right. cycle. If it's in the aftermarket, you see it at SEMA, it's in your garage two months later. Okay, so, so for, for lane keep assist or mm -hmm. lane departure warning, I mean, what, yeah. what, what is it that someone buys that they put on their car? A lot of times it's for personalization or customization of the vehicle. Let's say you got uh, lane departure warning and uh, it flashes lights or gives you the haptics or an audio signal in your car. Someone says, okay, a SEMA innovator comes and says, what if I just had an LED that is concentric with my side view mirrors that has... I want the color of Diane's jacket. I want the blue in there, or red, or whatever that color may be. I don't want this obtrusive warning there. I want to see that in my rearview mirrors. That's what SEMA's doing, taking it and personalizing the safety feature or the human driver interface with that ADAS feature. Mm -hmm. Pretty cool. And, uh, here we got a question from Kevin Fetty who wrote in who said, most any enthusiast is excited to build their own EV performance car. But here's what I find when I try I plan to build my, my dream. Lack of components, performance motors, batteries that only come from scrapped Teslas. Number two, <laughs> difficulty packaging, fitting all the pieces into a car of your choice. And all that said and done, you're only left with a reshaped Tesla. He says, I think modular components are both unique and plentiful, but this would be near impossible for under $60,000. When are they coming? Meaning, when are all the parts and components coming to build a performance electric car? They're here today. Uh, I would recommend he go to AutonomousStuff.com, Astuff.com. Mm. Great company. You want an NVIDIA PX2 computer? You can buy it through Autonomous Stuff. Mm. Basically, think of, uh, remember the movie The Fastest Indian? Yeah. Yeah. So you looked at, at the begin opening scene, he's got a big shelf of uh, offerings to the gods of speed. Pistons, <laughs> right. cranks, and everything like that. Across. Today, fast forward. Offerings to the gods of autonomy. autonomy. You see an NVIDIA computer. You see a mobile eye camera. You see a Conti or a Bosch sensor on that. That's where you go. You go to autonomous stuff. And there are other, I'll call it warehouse dist distribution companies, popping up with these systems. You go to that shelf. You can pull those parts off the shelf. You can get that EV with certain levels of autonomy as well. But you'll get that performance EV. So there's our hobbyist of the future right there. Absolutely, you know? and not afraid to do it, particularly with EV. I mean, uh, you know, if you're not paying attention to uh, electric vehicles or autonomy today, uh, you better start. Look what happened at Goodwin. What is it used to be tagline? I guess Festival of Speed. Festival of yeah. Speed. Now Festival of Technology, Festival with their Future Lab. Two th great things, the uh, Volkswagen IDR. IDR. Yeah. Went up Pikes Peak in less than eight minutes. Record time, electric. Robo race, goes on the hill climb, Goodwin. Goes around there again. No driver. Is it ready for uh, prime time public racing yet? No way. But again, Robo Race is all about competing on the algorithms. Mm -hmm. That's what builders like that are looking at to build an EV yeah. or an autonomous racer. And that is that is what's going to make cool. I mean, Detroit moving to June 2020. I'll bet we'll I mean, see Detroit Auto Show. Detroit Auto Show, right? right. I think the uh, and I call it Detroit Auto Show because I think they are changing the name. I'll bet they change it to that. <laughs> it used to be Detroit Auto Show, so I can yeah, go back so, yeah, to that. So. Yeah. Well, it was old new. I mean, yeah. we're going to see things like that by then. Uh, you mentioned that uh, Mark is bringing, Mark Royce, bringing a uh, 2019 cruise. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, AV. Yeah, AV. cruise AV. I mean, again, Kyle Vo is instrumental in bringing that together, what they've done. They got uh, the coolest thing about that. Kyle Vogt, for the people at home, is the guy who started cruise automation at General Motors. Oh, yeah, Kyle Vogt. Vogt. Yeah, Kyle yeah, Vogt. Uh, all of 30 years old today, maybe 31 pushing it. But, uh, uh, but again, the kind of technology that STEM and STEAM graduates are attracted to and gets them excited about automotive again. And don't you we think that. that electrification only complements performance? Absolutely. And, and a great, great example there, John, is the difference between electric vehicles, like the, the Volkswagen IDR, and electrification. You've got drive-by-wire, brake-by-wire, all sorts of electrification of vehicles continuing. Not as many, you know, market uh, size 3.5%, I think, of all vehicles sold 
yeah. maybe electric vehicles. But look at the electrification. Try to find a vehicle with a me mechanical parking brake. I think they're all electrified now, things of that sort. Yeah. And that, that just goes as part of that. And that's why I think we'll see the have one. Uh, succession of uh, you know, 12 volt three. and mer merging into 42 volts to power all these things. Yeah. Uh, Alexander Karabitsis writes in to say, is the SEMA show open to the public? If not, why? And it's not. Ah, that's, a, that's, a, that's an annual debate, yeah. the SEMA show. Uh, it is a trade show, business to business. And Buyers and, and how yeah. many people did you say were attending? 160,000 or so. Yeah, so and trust same, me, it's, yeah. it's like so crowded there as it is. It's that 22 if miles. If you opened it to the public, forget it's, about it. Yeah. Yeah. It's 22 miles of everything you don't necessarily need, but everything you want. Barry and, Rector, because uh, oh, uh, this segues with it. Barry Rector from Indianapolis writes in, specifically to you, John, auto shows are experiencing declines in manufacturer participation and are making changes to lure them back as well as more attendees. Is SEMA having the same sort of concerns? Uh, the lifestyle is changing, as I mentioned, the intersection of cars and car culture. But uh, to his first question there, the, the SEMA show is open to the public on Friday afternoon. Not the show, but the battle of the builders and what we call the SEMA cruise mm -hmm. and SEMA ignited. So that goes across the street, typically to the gold lot across. Uh, all the, so, uh, you know, 400 or so cars come out of the convention center. This and is go Las across Vegas, the by the way, for people who Yeah, Las Vegas. Yeah, it's always held in Las Vegas. And... Uh, uh, this is the 53rd year, I believe, so uh, that's a chance for consumers to come in and see the cars, and they line up 10 deep with bleachers and everything to watch those cars <laughs> go, great. because they're excited about it, and, so, and yeah. so but, are the exhibitors. But to, to the point of this question, John, I mean, do you see a change in terms of the demographic of the type of people who have an interest in either the cars or the culture. I mean, are they getting a little more gray? Are they getting a little... Uh, mm, they're actually little getting more, younger. The battle of the builders, younger. we're seeing a lot more younger builders getting into it because uh, certainly the vocational aspect of the technology of cars. So they're 53 Good. then. Oh, no, no, young. <laughs> we're, we're, we're talking much student age, particularly community college, like uh, Washington, Washington Community College, great up, uh, great foundation, like Square One Foundation. Mm -hmm. uh, first Robotics. All those types of kids uh, that gravitate into building their hot rod or maybe a muscle electric or a hot rod hybrid, they see that technology, like Maker Faire going on this weekend. Those are the types of kids that you see attracted to the new, I'll call it the next generation of battle the builders, but they still look up to people like Chip Foose and all the others that are there, oh, yeah. and they want that, uh, that magnetism, if you will, of what they did. And, and again, that's where Hot Wheels comes in because that's... Uh, there's something that resonates with the car industry with kids. Cars, phones, and computers changed our lives. But, uh, you know, it, so you're not worried about the phones and computers sort of taking some of the shine away from the cars part? Well, two of those can be left in your car, but you have to have a car to yeah, That's true. Right? And an Uber. Long only long an Uber. Only if you're eating yeah, e-cigarette. Right. But uh, no, not, I think they're merging. I think, uh, you know, you got disruption, you got friction, uh, you got all this really stuff happening, and that, those are hallmarks of a, of a new era, and we're seeing that. Hey, just to segue uh, off this uh, for a moment, our work wrote in, Diane, to say, please post the name of the concours show and location. He says, Plymouth, Michigan is vague, and where is St. John's? Is there a website where they can go and get all yes. the info? It, and it's mm. clumsy, so it's spelled C-O-N-C-O-U-R-S-U-S-A dot org. So oh. concoursusa dot org. org. Yeah. So, and if you want to know, St. John's is what? Roughly five mile the road? And it's St. John's is at 44045 Five Mile Road in yeah. Plymouth, Michigan. Yeah. So, and our off parking, off site parking is at 8400 Beck Road at the Plymouth Canton High School because we cannot park all the cars on the St. John's property. So, we have a nice air conditioned bus ride for the folks. If you show an advance ticket at that lot, you will get free advance purchase ticket, you'll get free parking. So tickets right now on our website are $35. And you can buy tickets at the Inn at St. John's at our other events before Sunday. Day of show, tickets are $45. Mm. And you will pay $10 to park, but that money goes to the Plymouth Canton Salem Lightning Robotics team. So we're promoting uh, excellent. the, yeah, the youth there. So um, either way, everybody wins. So the past serving the future. I like Hopefully, that. That, that, we get these kids over and they look at great. cars and get involved. And, it's, it's, mm -hmm. and, and if they didn't get the web address, all you got to do is Google Concours and you guys come up 
fairly okay. high on that, mm -hmm. on, that on that list. But so. your, your point about the gray hairs or the gray beards, Gary, uh, absolutely, that's part of the industry. And some people say, uh, you know, w wish the good old days would come back kind of thing. Well, this is truly the golden age of new performance and mobility. Uh, and cars will continue to be uh, works of art, works of power, works of access, works of fun, and certainly works of fashion. And look how that evolves. It didn't put the clothing business out of industry, uh, industry out of business. And that just changes. The point is uh, disruptive technologies that we're seeing in the auto industry that are really cool, I think, they don't totally uh, negate existing technologies. But what they do is they eliminate companies. Don't be one of those companies. Embrace the technology. Go hand in hand to the future. So, so what, would, what would cause a company to be completely disrupted out of business? Ah, how many carburetor companies do you see out there? <laughs> Certainly for hobbyist companies, you see a lot of them, like Holly still makes them. Yeah. But how many, you know, if you go to your repair shop today, or you go to AutoZone or Pep Boys, you're probably not going to get a carburetor. Mm -hmm. You'll fuel injection. There's an article I wrote uh, about seven or eight years ago now. It said, uh, title was, does SEMA have five years left? Are we going to be regulated out of business with stability control? Mm -hmm. uh, fuel emissions are going to be so tough. Or are we going to be riding around little butt haulers that have no drivers and that kind of thing? I got more hate mail for that article. But I said, did you read the article? They said, no, no, I saw the headline, I had to call you. <laughs> oh I said, God. well, do you know that my boss, Chris Kirsting, the CEO of SEMA, we've used that. We took that headline from SEMA News 1971. Wow. So it shows well, you the SEMA members, SEMA community, the innovators, entrepreneurial spirit, find a way. Wow. And, and that's what's so cool about it. You got street smarts and book smarts that come together at SEMA. And that's what makes it so cool. It's what someone's interpretation of cool is. Uh, Neil Young, when he was uh, going through the show, and, and Neil Young and Roger Penske told me never to name drop. So, <laughs> but I had to say it because Neil had a classic line. <laughs> did Neil drive his link volt there? He did, twice. And he said, basically, an old car can take you to new places. Mm. And that's what I think is so profound about what he did with link volt. Turned it into an EV. And his first one, 2010, drove it to the show. Beautiful. He had a couple thousand pounds of lithium iron, I-R-O-N batteries, because A123 Whoa. and some of the other companies wouldn't sell them the batteries at the time. So he had iron bat lithium iron batteries from China. He drove it home, and you know, a lot of the SEMA members working with him, companies like AVL and I saw it and said, you know, Neil, this, this, this could use some help, <laughs> systems integration. He drove it home, burned down. Oh, I remember that. Yeah, that's right. Where he was able to yeah. salvage the shell, lost some of his amps and guitars in his really famous uh, bar, barn back there in uh, Palo Alto. So three years later, it comes back with AVL and e yeah, and built it up yeah. even better. And then he tells the story of what I call son of Link Volt. But Neil <laughs> told the story again and how AVL has continued. He's got well over 50,000 miles on that. Wow. Good for and he him. and Daryl Hand driving it that. across Canada, driving it. I mean, literally driving around LA, you'll probably see Neil driving it today or this weekend. So cool. And what a statement for younger kids saying what can be, you know, it's, it's basically cool. a hot rod hybrid with, you know, right. the equivalent that he has of the horsepower in there, mm -hmm. the mileage that he gets, and, and look how cool it is. And his point where he picked the 59 Lincoln was, he wanted the heaviest, biggest car he could find <laughs> and show that you can electrify and hybridize mm -hmm. them. So. Sure. So and it sort of goes back to that question that we had about, you know, finding the components the to, yeah. to build something mm -hmm. up. And, uh, Perfect. You know, well, of course, if yeah, Neil probably has the money. Yeah. For yeah, but if, yeah. Okay, but, but if Neil can find it, trust me, I'm sure yeah, yeah. that oh, yeah. anybody <laughs> can find it. Well, he's these. a very smart guy. He and Ray Brizo is built, and a lot of the people he's built oh, that with. Yeah. Neil's uh, very smart. No, so, so he knows how you, it works. Do you see young people interested in what you have to show at your concours over the years? Or we do. Is, it, is it like John showing up? Either of them. Yeah. We have old people like these two, but we have a lot of young people, <laughs> young people like I'll us. Take, I'll take like that, us that really, yeah. 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 No, we do. And you know, it's interesting because they'll, they'll come there to see the Ferraris and the, you know, the red, red sports cars, I call them, or, you know, but they'll walk by a, a sculpture like the man's car and say, mm -hmm. wow, that is, what is that? That is so cool because it looks like a piece of art and they never thought they'd like it. Or they'll, they'll hear a steam car or they'll, they'll look at something and go, wow, I never realized that was like that. So you know, just getting there, there, mm -hmm. and then, you know, getting somebody to ride in a car is a totally different experience, too. How many times have you taken a person for a ride in your car, any of us that have any kind of, like, I'll call it collector car or a fun car, mm -hmm. and they go, this is so fun, you know, I want one of these, yeah. or, you know, I get more looks, you know, people riding in my car get more looks in my 32 Ford Hot Rod than the wow. people next to us in a yeah. Corvette, you know, but it's just fun, mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. There's definitely um, an element, for sure.
And I'm excited about the auto show coming, you know, coming to June. I think that's going to be a good move. Um, we're really delighted at the Concorde. We have um, Hyundai bringing their La Fille Rouge, their concept car that was shown in Geneva. This will be the first time in the U.S.? First time in the U.S. Wow. So Sang Yup Lee, their vice or their um, VP of Global Design, will be on site on Saturday um, telling folks about mm -hmm. the car. So... Um, yeah, we had hoped to get him on this show, but he's not coming into town. He'll be early in Friday in night, to, right? Today's show. Yeah, so that <clears throat> that is an honor to have that car on the field. Um, I just like I like the name La Fille Rouge, and it, yeah. it means sensuous sportiness. I like saying that. But the car is beautiful. It's, it's yeah. stunning. So. Well, what's so interesting in that design is it, it it's pure shape. It's mm -hmm. the shape that defines the styling of the car. There's not all these creases and, you know, it's just pure shape it, that makes it. It is sensuous sportiness, just to remember that. You know, and beautiful. I think with the Detroit show moving to June, it'll be week, if not weeks, of a Back festival. To, is, is car. Here? That's it. Well, oh, that's it. The Field Rouge. Isn't that beautiful? And, yeah, you can see. I mean, th th there's some bone lines and stuff, but, y you know, mm -hmm. If, if you see it even from a, a farther distance, it's it's just pure shape that mm. defines the car. Classics. And I was, mm. did you go to Geneva? I was not in I Geneva, not there, no, but so I'm, I'm excited to see it for real. Mm. They're, they're putting out some great products, so that's yeah. fun to have these mm. these concept cars here. And I think we'll see more of that. I mean, our, you know, our event is held in, at the end of July, Eyes on Design is in June. Mm. So, you know, what what's this gonna be in 2020? I think they're, with the Grand Prix, with, Everything going on. I think there is, a, you know, three weeks of opportunity for people to experience a lot of automotive events in Detroit. Oh yeah, you can mash together the Detroit Grand Prix. You can mash together uh, cars from the first Detroit Auto Show, whenever, and kind of like you do with the concourse. You can certainly bring together all sorts of the technology displays and demonstrations outside on the Cobo roof. Sure. Uh, and connect. You can basically take the. Goodwood, you can take CES and SEMA, mash them together, and create the reinvention of right. Detroit Auto Show 4.0. We're flat, so, whole other... so how are we going to go up a hill like Goodwood? Oh. Well, there's Mount Fine. Clemens. Yeah. It, it's a rhetorical. <laughs> <laughs> For those of you watching, well, that's a town. Yeah. Yeah. Folks, they'll find a You'll way. will be here all week. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they do have actually bumper stickers that say, I climb Mount Clemens, and they do have an event, a car event in Mount Clemens. That's I, the hill climb, the Mount Clemens hill climb. I raced the Soapbox Derby 1968 at Mount Elliott. There you go. And it, was, it had to be 200 feet high. <laughs> that hill there, so. Yeah. That's great. Hey, we've got a few more people who have written in here. Uh, Levante A says, I'd be pleased to see if there's any sobs at the concours. Oh, my gosh. Gary, he says, I'll bring mine. we got to get Dr. Right, Data right, in. I apologize. Okay, because we have a question, and I'll, I'll see if I can yep, find Dr. one. Dr. Data's uh, working on that one. Sub-GR77 wants to know, does the concours have a survivor class? We, and I'm we, not even sure what that is. Yeah, what it's, is that? It, we refer to it as a preservation class. So you can bring a car on the field that is not restored. That's what mine is, not restored. Mm -hmm. But it's in awfully good condition. For you could nominate it. Okay. It, and mm -hmm. So we do have a, a preservation class, yes. Yeah. Yep. Good. Uh, Extreme Ways wrote back to say about the electronic license plate, yeah, wait until people start hacking them oh, yeah. from oh, China. Absolutely. Uh -huh. <laughs> yep. And, and think what the, our plate had to go through to get that uh, uh, put on vehicles. And I think five states, it's, a, it's legal now. Yeah, and law enforcement had to approve Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, and I think that's what's so cool about the aftermarket. Uh, maybe get a waiver, maybe get an uh, exemption, maybe Here's get an example of that. Yeah, to put it on. Plate. But the point is you can't stop the innovation, the disruption. I mean, the license plate hasn't been... Innovated since the first years. came out. Yeah, hundred years. So, so what do you got this coming out? Was well, it a little porcelain. battery in there? It was porcelain. Oh, it runs right off the the harness the, on board the vehicle. Yeah. And uh, and, it could, and think of all the how you become basically you know a, a traditional plate to a smart plate and think of the things that you can you can actually convey with a smart plate from an ADAS solution from uh, as you mentioned forward rear chimsels. Et What's the name of the company again? Uh, our plate. Yeah, is our what they call it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I remember in interviewing them at uh, NADA and they were mm -hmm. saying mm -hmm. uh, the state of California really wants this because I, and I don't remember the uh, the exact number, but because it would not have to make all these metal plates every single year and make yeah. zillions of exactly. them. Exactly. I mean, they're going to save millions of dollars yep. at the the DMV. Yep. And, and you know, the, the point about hacking and all that, certainly all that's there. Cybersecurity, you know, everything. The you know, only way to save that is to take one of those our plates or your computer or your phone and bury it six inches deep, turn it off, and take the batteries out. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's, it's gone. People will find a way. And then put a tinfoil hat on your head. There you go. Yeah. Yeah.
First put it at your key fob and then put that on your head, right? It's going to put a lot of prisoners <laughs> out of business, though. That's yes. the only thing. That's what I was thinking about that. Yeah. you got a lot of prisons in California. Yeah. No sobs at your show, though. Yeah. No sobs. Sorry. Nominate one. If you have an awesome mm -hmm. sob, nominate it for, for 2019. Mm -hmm. Real good. Well, look, we've burned up an hour here. Probably wow. a good really? time. Really? Well, I know. It went by quick. We could go good on. Fast. This yeah. was excellent. Good. But Diane Schneider, thanks so much for coming on. Thanks, John. And uh, telling us all about the concourse coming up this weekend. Thanks. See all John Morniak, there. great having you on the show. It's an honor. Uh, always cool to hear that performance is going strong and the future looks mm -hmm. bright. Very much, yeah. yeah. Got to wear your shades. Yeah. And Gary, we're going to have to do this kind of a show again next week. Why don't we try that? Well, well, <laughs> well, we'll, we we'll give it some thought. All right. Okay. Cool. Of course, we want to thank all of you for having tuned in. Thanks. Auto Line After Hours is brought to you by Bridgestone Tires, your journey, our passion, and by Lear, a global leader in automotive seating and electrical systems. Visit our website, Autoline.tv, where you can watch us live Thursday afternoons. Get your daily fix with Autoline Daily and in-depth analysis and interviews with Autoline This Week. There's all that and much more at Autoline.tv. So, John, I got a question for you. Mm -hmm. I was talking with the people at Bridgestone this week, and they wanted to know where's the right to repair going. I figured you might know that. Uh, that's more of the MEMA side, okay. more equipment manufacturers, and uh, uh, SEMA's more about the... But it affects SEMA. Oh, oh absolutely. Too, right? Yeah, the, uh, but it's, it's, you're swapping the equipment out to increase the performance. So SEMA's 10% of the actual aftermarket. Yeah. So the 90% is it like when they repair a vehicle or mm -hmm. uh, want to put something else on it, whether it's OEM or uh, aftermarket. Uh, the right to repair is to make sure that the independent installer, independent repair shop still has access to data, car data. So that's uh, still alive and well. Uh, the lobbyists are keeping that alive. Uh, I think so, uh, what they were especially asking is when it comes to autonomous cars. That's going to change a lot, though, because of insurance. And uh, right now when you... Uh, Let's say if you even have a level two autonomy, let's say you have some passive as well as active systems on board that vehicle, it gets in a wreck, you take it in. The OEM requires a pre-scan of the vehicle, which means they plug it in and do a health scan of the entire vehicle. And your typical vehicle today can have 1,000 to 1,500 DTCs, diagnostic trouble codes. So it's been in a wreck, you see 300 things that are wrong with this vehicle. The OEM demands that before it goes in and then demands it to be zero when it comes out. So it's just going in, mm. into the OBD2 port. Right, and they plug just, in. They and, just take it. Yeah. And it's, it could be something as simple as uh, you need to recalibrate the cameras. Uh, you see things are happening that, uh, you know, let's say the cameras can't be recalibrated because uh, you put a different bumper or something like that on it. Uh, you'll see radar field reduced. They, or they, they have no idea. The roads and yeah. <laughs> so the OEMs and, and yeah. much less a, a, an OEM captive dealership having access to what the OEMs know about the vehicle makes it very challenging for the right to repair with an independent shop. Yeah. They can some of these tools like a Bosch scanning tool is fifty thousand bucks. It's gotta be updated every hour mm -hmm. from the cloud. Independent guy, wow. tough tough to compete with that. So you need to work together. Well I think when we get to autonomous cars though that none of us will own them individually and they'll basically be owned yeah, by organizations I mean, such uh, that uh, you know I uh, I, I think you're right. I think fleets are going to operate them for the mm -hmm. most part. But I think individuals are going to want their own. They're going to. Personalize, mm -hmm. personalize the you interior know, the pods. Uh, All right, no. so Mark Zuckerberg yeah. will have one, and Elon will have mm -hmm. one, and those guys will have one, and the rest of us, if we want to participate, will have to call it up on our phones. I think, you know, we talked earlier, it's going to be like the van of the, the 70s for all of us who are older. Mm -hmm. You know, it was like personalized in the inside of a van with the old, the Scooby van with the shag carpet yeah. and the, the oh. decals on the outside. You know, you can do that same thing with the autonomous pod. Galpin, uh, you won't own it. Bob, Bert Bach, but you won't made. own it? No, I think you'll own I it. Think, I think no, they'll be affordable. I think they'll do it as a hobbyist. I think, uh, I, hey, I've got, you know, some kid, young daughter, young, uh, wants to work on STEM science, technology, engineering, and math stuff. Hey, I bought this autonomous car so they could learn. I, I think the cost is going to come way, oh, yeah. way down. I, 50, I, 60 grand to start off with, 30 grand. Oh, I think it'll 25. be far greater than that. You think For so? level five autonomy? I don't you, think so. Oh, it's, it's like gonna, computers. It's, it's going to be I, huge. Cell phones. I, 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 phone I bet one of those cars will, will easily cost a quarter of a million bucks to have a complete... For everything... For, uh, it's going to be able. It's going to be able to drive anywhere, 
and it's going to be able to do so safely, and it's going to know not to run over the nuns and to you know fly you off the cliff. And I mean, it's it's going to it's you know, and because if you look at, I mean, it's not only the cost of building it, and it's not only the cost of the sensors. So you're talking about an OEM vehicle in your driveway. That no, I'm talking OMO, about OEMO, uh, Apple. So, so I'm talking about if you have a complete. Yeah, a level five. Has level five. Yep. None mm -hmm. of us will be able to afford it. Okay. I'm talking more about a uh, an aftermarket, made it myself, vehicle. Will that be legal though? In some cases, uh, yes. You know, if they go on a closed course. <laughs> In some cases. You no, know, the ones they they take out to Thunder Hill. Well, you but know, that's street legal. Right. Oh no, oh no. That, that, that's right. That's, that's, right. that's right. Street legal. Take a quarter of a million bucks to get all the FMVSS passed. That, that's that's exactly. Yeah, what I'm that, that's prohibitive. That ain't gonna right. happen. Yeah. Yeah. So, so it'll be, it, it will be the hobbyist, and so you know yeah. that. So, you guys will have five more years. Yeah, exactly. The autonomous hobbyist, and and I, I can't imagine. I think it's gonna be so cool when Hot Wheels comes out with one, and say this is the GM Cruise, and you know, you know the way they made speed cool for that. I'll bet you there's some autonomous element to that toy. Okay, now now Hot Wheels is coming to Detroit um, next month, right? Yeah, in Dearborn. Yeah. It's crazy at the Walmart in Dearborn. Yes, yeah, the Hot the, Wheels. Yeah, did you see that on their list? Yeah, they're, they have the, convention. Oh, yeah, and they're announcing that new the new Hot Wheel toy. Yeah, the, yeah. And you can nominate your car to be the next Hot Wheel toy. So that's where they're announcing what which car they chose. Yeah. Is it going to be like a Murray Path kind of design, or you know, is it a Chip Foose thing, yeah. or is it somebody we don't know in Nebraska that did something cool uh, with their Busy car? Busy Moto is building the actual physical version of the toy that they're going to introduce at SEMA. Ah. And uh, he's in, uh, I think, Ontario, California. And, uh, but it looks like a, uh, they showed the um, 3D printed model on History Channel last week. So it's, uh, it's kind of, remember the old Orbitron, Ed Big Daddy Roth? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Looks Roth a little Orbitron-esque really? to me. That's my opinion of it. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but certainly with a contemporary look to it. Uh, it's got two big superchargers up front. I mean, literally, if you sit in it, from what I saw, you can't even look out, so you're not going to be able to drive it. Like the, but Hot Wheels doesn't you know, matter. The Jetsons. Right. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Okay, yeah. two questions from NC. He says, where was all the talk about AVs? I think you missed the beginning of the show or some part of the mm -hmm. show. We talked mm -hmm. about that. Yeah. He also says, how will AVs affect the last mile conundrum? To me, they solve it. There isn't you, one. Yeah. You, get off, yeah. you yeah. get off a bus, a train, a subway, right. you get in an AV, and it takes you the last mile. Or you yeah. take your bird scooter. Yeah. Or that. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. Or your Marty McFly AV skateboard. Jump on that. Mm -hmm. Your shoes. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Segway's got those new shoes they just came yeah, out Yeah, the with. shoes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that last mile, I think, uh, and it could just be, it could be a pedal bike for that matter that comes along with it. So. Or they have the yeah, bikes that, that are be more motorized. Yeah. Because yeah. when you get Electric off, bike. You know, imagine January and it's 10 below. Yeah, you're not, you're not going to go on a yeah, bike. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, Detroit particularly. Yeah. But you won't be at the Detroit Auto Show. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, so when it's no January flight. in Detroit, yeah. you won't need to go outside. <laughs> exactly. Well, that's got to be cool for a journalist like yourselves. And, and when it comes to June, all the stuff they want to show you, they say, come on back. I'll take over here. And I think it's nice because it's going to be more experiential. It's not going to be just yeah. cars sitting inside. People can actually right, experience stay. the cars. Which, and to me, that's that particularly sells. important for AVs. we got to get the public yeah. exposed exactly. to this technology. Absolutely. You know, it's like you can't have a focus group. If people no, ask, no, you know, no. who wants you know, a boom box on your ears? No, no, no. It, it's, you don't get it. We think we know where the industry is going. Let us show you. Mm. As opposed to you telling us what you think would be cool. Mm. I mean, there is a mixture there, but the people with the expertise have to drive it to a point and then get feedback, not the other way around. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, who would have asked for, you know, a smartphone? Nobody. Who would have asked for a smart car? Yeah. It's well, a, you know, the old Henry Ford line. Yeah. If I asked my customers what they wanted before the car was invented, they would have yeah. said, I want a faster horse. Exactly. That's true. So See, now we got is, smarter. And this is why we can't think of automated vehicles as just being an evolution of existing technology. Exactly. Because, it would, because we would be thinking in terms of the faster horse. Mm -hmm. That's right. very true, and, Gary. And that's a total yeah. different pathway, mindset, yeah. industry, future that we would go down. So. And a lot of this will come up at Traverse City next week. Oh, I know. That, that's yeah. With Carla Bile and the way she's taking car, I think uh, going to see some fantastic I think uh, presentations on, you know, what's the future of the industry look like? And you're absolutely right, Gary, it's not just about cars. It's about the whole ecosystem and uh, right. it's, it's trans all modes. Yep, multi modes. Trans you know, transporting people, goods, uh, services, everything built around that. But what's 
kind of come out of that. Uh, some of the vehicles that are part of our future will show up in the concourse someday. You know, what, the 2090 concourse in Plymouth. Yeah. You know. What 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 car do you think we have now is collectible? What what car is what cars are going to be there? In oh, 2029. I, right. What cars should we be saving now to bring to the concourse? Cadillac ELR. There you go. Super that's Cruise, that's yeah. one of one. No, not the Super Cruise. Oh. This was their the Chevrolet Bolt. Bolt yeah. mm -hmm. Oh, but yeah. it was a nice car. But oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Beautiful car, yeah. inside and out. Very interesting technology. Extraordinarily low volume. Yeah. And that tends to me Please. to be what makes for a collector car or a, a mm -hmm. you know something that people will go back and look at in the future. It's got to look really cool. Mm -hmm. It's got to have something unique about mm -hmm. it, and it's got to be rare. Low and production. Right. Low production. And they didn't mean the ELR to be low <laughs> production. That was not the plan, but that's how it worked out. So that's one of mine uh, on the list of potential collectibles. Of, And boy, uh, you could probably pick one up right now, dirt cheap with low miles. Hmm. Well, it's going to be interesting because part of our Concord too is Automotive Heritage Awards that Steve Purdy is, is heading up mm -hmm. with Angie Borneas and Bob Giles. And they've... They have a, an award that will be presented on Sunday that what that journalist chose this car as the collectible car of the future, mm -hmm. a no. car that we have yeah. now. So remember Just the, the fact that they say that is going to make people pay attention to that and start. So cool. another one I'd throw on the list is uh, Lincoln Blackwood. Oh, yeah. The, the Anybody remember the that pickup. one? Sure, that the pickup. That yeah. tailgate that opened up yeah. in the back. Like, yeah. yeah, I just exactly. saw one the other day. Yeah. I made that. Very interesting. Yeah. The, there was some interesting technology in the build of the bed and extraordinarily low volume. Mm -hmm. Yep. So there, there's another yeah. one. Yep. And if I think a minute, I'll probably think of a third, too. SSR. Yeah. SSR. Yeah. SSR. Same thing. Yeah. Chevy SSR. Yeah. Right. Viper. Mm -hmm. People love the Viper. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was yeah. great last year celebrating but to me, Viper. Things like the, the Viper and the SSR are, and even the Prowler for that matter, and you mentioned you'd seen one the other day, those to me are kind of obvious. I think that the, the ELR, Cadillac, and the, the Lincoln Blackboard are not as low obvious. production. They won't right. be as collectible. It's because no one saw them. <laughs> yeah. It's because there's so few of those built. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. And Vipers, there's quite a few, but mm -hmm. yeah. So, but that is an interesting thought. You know, it's mm -hmm. to what, what should we save now that's collectible? Mm -hmm. But, and, and I love this hobby because everybody likes something different for a different reason. If we all like the same thing and they're all alike, it wouldn't be near as fun. Exactly, yeah. And I like what, what you were talking about earlier, the, the preservation class mm -hmm. as opposed to restoration. Right. right. And, you know, if you've ever watched Antiques Roadshow on public TV, you know, if, uh -huh. if you take a, a Louis the Fourteenth or whatever furniture and you restore it, you have ruined the yeah. thing, the in, value. In, in, at least in terms of value. Right. And, uh, and I like this idea of preserving not just doing a you know a chassis up restoration. Exactly. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. And some yeah, some cars shouldn't be messed with. Yeah. You know, a few years ago they brought a Cadillac in that was, you know, the um Historic Vehicle Association, you know, puts these cars on the mall and then they're mm -hmm. they're put into the national registry just like the the um you know Mustang that we just saw come mm -hmm. through. But yeah, so it was a Cadillac and it was not mm -hmm. not touched. It was just basically dragged out of the barn. So mm -hmm. Yeah, it's good to have those cars. We are, when I was at No Fear, we called that the paradox of cool. And the point is, when does something crossover go from basically mass production and then becomes a commodity? And uh, you killed, basically you cooled it, the paradox of cool. So it was, and there's a Yogi huh. Bearism that we used around that. It's basically no one buys those anymore because mm -hmm. they're too popular. Yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> oh, okay. There so you go. the point is that you reach a point where it has to be reinvented. And I think those are the classics that we're going to start seeing, like the yeah. Blackwood. So Caraga One just wrote in to say Kia Stinger might be a collectible. There you go. Oh, sure. It could be. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Yep. Mm -hmm. And Lost in the Curve is uh, written in, Gary, I think he's asking about you. What time frame are you thinking in AVs for? 10 to 15 years? That they'll exist. Or 50 years. That, that they'll exist? No, I think that he's thinking that they're going to be that expensive as you think they are. I don't agree. <laughs> so, no, I, 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 I think that within 10 years, Waymo will be rolling around with vehicles, whether they're Pacificas or, or Jaguars. Absolutely. Yeah. But Ten years. there's going to be so much technology in those things that they're going to be unaffordable mm -hmm. within 10 years. Now, 20 years, 50 years, will we be able to afford them? Possibly. But will they be... Cars as we know them, or will they be pods? 
will they be those uh, Navia buses that are rolling around in places yeah. like uh, City and in, in downtown Detroit. Yeah. And uh, mm -hmm. um, but again, I mean, will they, they will not be personal transportation as as we nope. it's, we're familiar with that. Wouldn't it be fun to still be here to see that? We will yeah. be. Come on. Yeah. You too. Yeah. We won't know if they are, but we'll be here. All you have to do is chew that stem cell chewing gum, and that, that's going to let you live to the end of the century. Yeah, I need a case cool. of that. <laughs> I think it's fun. It really is. It, it, it's an exciting time, I think. Uh, we had the Robocar uh, after the New York uh, E Grand Prix last year. Yeah. So we brought that to M City. The Robo Racer. And, right, the car. And we brought it to the Center for Mobility in M-City. Cool. More students came out for that than they've ever seen. Uh, that was amazing. So yeah. that tells you where Case in that's point. going. Well, I, I like the premise of that series in that you're going to have uh, crowdsourced teams writing all the software for it. Mm -hmm. I think that's a clever idea. From a spectator standpoint, probably not going to yeah, catch up. long ways from that. It, but it, for it, the, the maker crowd, yep. especially the coding part of the maker crowd, mm -hmm. I could see that be hugely popular. Absolutely. And, you know, and, you know, we were talking about Dale Earnhardt Sr. before. And, you know, he was a hero. Today, racing has a lot of celebrities, very few heroes. Good point. So taking the driver out of the cockpit there, I mean, that's, you know, that's, that's certainly profound. But you're putting the uh, spotlight on the technology. So the heroes, not just celebrities, are going to come from engineering, or the product development, mm -hmm. innovators. Uh, so it's going to drive a whole different set of people that really get respected. Uh, kind of like we were talking earlier with some of the car designers. Mm -hmm. Look, you know, the, back to the, the Ford GT, 40, et cetera. Those people became, they, they weren't just celebrities. They were like heroes of the industry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I mean, even people like Lee Iacocca, they were bigger than life. They did stuff. And, uh, Sergio. Uh, yeah, Sergio. Sergio. Great Bring it back to the right. Chris full circle. Sergio, right Absolutely. where we started. Absolutely. And that's what makes it so much fun. Yeah. I think that's uh, the personalities. Yeah. And uh, it still is, uh, you know, Detroit is still the epicenter of engineering, I think, for automotive, the cool stuff. And uh, there are other pockets around Where's the world. Where's your boy Kyle Vought at, though? Pardon me? <laughs> yeah, Kyle's in Silicon Valley. Uh oh, yeah, it, busted. <laughs> yeah. But I think it's because the uh, no one's smart enough or rich enough to do it alone. Detroit understands it. Silicon Valley understands it. Frankfurt understands it. Nagoya understands it. So it truly is. Uh, it, it's bigger than everybody, and it's touching everybody and other industries to morph into whatever it's going to become. Yeah, it's fun to be part of it, isn't it? Yeah. I yeah, yeah. really every day. Yeah. Real good. Well, why don't we? Uh, Hang it up cool. so we can let the crew get going. And yep. uh, But thanks, guys. Thanks. Thank really you. Pleasure. pleasure to be here. And really great. So, See you on Sunday, Diana. See you on Clip that. Oh, yeah. It's just a clip. <laughs>